Hello everyone, today I'm going to be taking you through a game that I played on Lee Chess yesterday, uh, just on my phone, and I beat an international master. I have actually beaten, uh, I'd say like 10 maybe, titled players uh, up to now, obviously online. Uh, this was quite a hectic game, so I thought I'd take you through it. Just to bear in mind, uh, the ratings that you see are Lee Chess ratings, so... They're a bit generous, they're probably like a hundred or something below what they appear as, but anyway, let's just get into it. So I open with e4, as always. My opponent plays, I think it's the Nimzovich, yeah, the Nimzovich defense. Chess.coms tells me I'm cheating, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, so I play d4, just playing principled, e5, which I believe is the main line. So, I think you're supposed to take, but I push because he's an international master. If I take, he's going to know the theory. He's also going to know the theory here, but I feel like I've got a better chance. So, he goes knight to e7. And something just to quickly note, um, like, now that I've beaten quite a few titled players, I don't really get the same, like, nervousness. It's kind of like an anticipation when I play them. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cook them. I think I've got a pretty good record against them when I play them because it, like, fires me up, you know? Uh, just because beating a title play is cool. Uh, just makes me want to step up that extra notch. So I play f4. The computer says it's a mistake. I don't care. It's a three-minute blitz game. And we've got the times. It's imported beautifully. It's imported beautifully from Lee Chess. Lovely stuff. Thank you, Jess.com. Uh, so he takes. I take with the bishop. Knight g6. Don't worry too much about all the uh, notations like mistake, inaccuracy, whatever. This is a blitz game that I'm playing on my phone that I'm probably sitting on the toilet while playing. I wasn't actually sitting on the toilet, but you get the point. My opponent probably was. Maybe that's why he lost to me. Bishop g3, uh, just controlling the knight's movement, oh my god, controlling the knight's movement, knight f6, just attacking the pawns, so knight c3, bishop c5, which the computer hates because I have e5, attacking the knight and forcing it back, obviously I missed this and played knight f3. I actually played knight f3 with the intention of going e5 because the knight would cover the square. And I completely forgot my bishop already covers the square. Don't ask. He plays d6, which stops e5. <clears throat> I play bishop e2 because I don't really know where else I want the bishop. Um, seems like an easy developing square, which is... It's a mistake, <laughs> apparently, but whatever. He plays knight g4. And I was kind of confused because I was like, my bishop defends the square. And coming in here isn't that great. But I spend about 30 seconds and play bishop to b5 check, which is the best move. The reason I play that is because once the bishops get traded, I can now go queen e2. Previously, my bishop was there. And the point is that now, if he goes knight to e3... I'm guarding this pawn. He castles. I castle. Queenside. So we've got opposite side castling. And he goes a6. Preparing b5. So I kick the knight out. Knight jumps in. Rook d3. Attacking the knight. The knight moves to c4. And if I can move this rook. I have a discovered attack. But my rook can't go anywhere. So it's, it's, it's kind of annoying. So I go h4, just to, just to pressure the knight. The computer prefers b3. I'm never ever going to play b3, because my dark squared bishop is over here. And if I play b3, his dark squared bishop is going to get in and suffocate my king. So, you know, just for example, something like this. Say I don't take the knight for whatever reason. This looks terrifying to me, forgetting that the knight's hanging. So I play h4, 
rook f to e8, h5, obviously. And then he goes knight g to e5. So I take it because he's attacking my rook. And I also want to get the knight to take so that my queen now has access over here, which also stops his queen from coming in, which was a it, it would have been quite annoying because it also comes with an attack on the bishop if his queen gets there. So I take once and bring my rook back. The computer wanted me to take again. And then go with my h6 plan. And then play rook f3. Or g4. But I wanted to keep my bishop on the board. Because I thought if I'm going to play h6 and weaken his dark squares, I want my bishop to be able to exploit them, right? Also, there's no need to trade in my mind, because the knight isn't going anywhere. So I bring the rook back, he plays h6. I play king b1, just a safe move, getting off the diagonal, in case of any bishop to e3 stuff later on, once I transfer my queen to the attack. Because if the bishop can come here with a check, then it could help to support the h6 pawn like very quickly. So he plays rook to f8. And when he plays this, I'm like, okay, I've got a good position here. Like, I can make something happen. I play rook df1 and apparently lose all my advantage because I should have played. What should I have played? I don't know. I play rook df1 because getting the rook to the open file like, I can't be a bad thing plays rook a e8, I play bishop f4, because I'm preparing g4 ideas, he goes rook e7, and look at his time, he's on 20 seconds, I'm on 44, so I'm low, but he's really low, and I'm like, okay, I've got to put the pressure on, so rook h4, which just adds a defender so that g4 can be played, because he's covered it twice, and now I'm covering it twice, Rook f8. And I was kind of confused about him doubling up. Because I'm like, my knight's defending the pawn. So you don't actually have any threats. And my rook is also x-raying the pawn. And my queen's defending it. So even if... Even if he takes the knight to remove the defender, I've still got two defenders. So in my head, it, he's wasting his time. I go g4. The computer says it's a mistake. He has 20 seconds, like, okay, computer, all right, whatever. And he goes b5, which is a mistake, so he should play f6, because if he goes f6, I can't go g5, because he's got two defenders, unless I can make some sort of sacrifice happen, right? But he goes b5. Idea to dislodge the knight, so that this pawn is now very weak. I come crashing through g5. He takes, takes, f6, because the bishop was attacking the rook. Bishop back to, back to c1, which I didn't really know where else I wanted it. If I put it here, it's blocking my rook. If I put it here, I've got a trade. I don't want to trade. If I put it here, then the knight can come to c4 of a tempo. So I thought bishop c1 was the best move. And here I'm down to 15 seconds, and he's on 18, so... Yeah, I bring my knight back to d1, and my pieces are retreating, and the attack looks to be fizzling out. He goes queen b5, I decline the queen trade, because I'm confident in my attack. He goes knight to f7, which, it opens up the attack on the pawn, but again, the re part of the reason I put my rook there in the first place was the fact that it x-rays here, and now the bishop and the pawn are gone. So bishop was, current, was previously here. The rook now helps defend. So his knight move helps to control h6, but I can just take on f6 because the pawn is pinned, which is why I put my queen on g2. He goes king h8. I play rook g6 because he's threatening to take now. And I'm attacking this pawn. And then he just gives me a rook. He's down to 3 seconds in fairness, but he just gives me a rook. So I accept the rook. And then here he actually runs out of time, and I win. 
the game was kind of uneventful, to be honest. Like, opposite side castling, a lot of misses from both of us. Like, I think I just attacked far quicker than he did. He was worried too much about the center, and I decided to send my pawns down the board and regroup the pieces, swing the queen over. He made a mistake, and then he panicked in low time. But I think, I, th I think the takeaway from this is that this guy is an international master. Not only did he just lose to me, I'm a terrible player. No, realistically, I'm a fairly good player, right? But I'm not titled, that's for sure. I'm a long way off getting any titles. So, you know, if you guys end up playing against any kind of title player, or just a player that's higher rated than you, there's no reason you can't pose them problems and ask questions of their position. And they might respond badly. They might make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Just go for it. Like, I always have the best success against titled players, in my opinion, because I go, you know, effort. Let's just go for this, because what have I got to lose? And that's what I did. I just shoved my pawns down the king's side, posed some problems, he messed up, and we won. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.